Hello everyone. In this installment of Strong Exam, I'll be discussing the measurement and interpretation of the respiratory rate. It is relatively straightforward, but I think you'll still learn something new today. Simply put, the respiratory rate is the number of breaths a person takes within one minute. Because the respiratory rate is typically much lower compared to the heart rate, and because it may be irregular, particularly while sleeping, it's important to observe for a longer period of time before extrapolating to a full minute. So instead of counting breaths in 15 seconds and multiplying by four, as is common to do for the heart rate, it's better to take a full 30 seconds and then multiply by two. One point of caution, if a patient is aware that you're measuring the respiratory rate, they may alter it, even subconsciously. So do not tell them you're measuring it. In practice, what works best is to tell the patient you're measuring the pulse, and once you've actually done that, continue to leave your finger on the patient's radial artery, while unbeknownst to them, you then subtly switch to counting respirations. The normal range of the respiratory rate is an interesting question. Everyone seems to know what it is, but if you ask different clinicians, you find that the ranges they respond with are not the same. Some will tell you 12 to 20, while others say 12 to 16, or even 10 to 16. That's because references themselves don't agree on this. Sometimes a reference doesn't even agree with itself. For example, the 13th edition of Bates's Guide to Physical Examination and History Taking offers these seemingly contradictory statements back to back. Normally, adults take approximately 12 to 20 breaths per minute in a quiet, regular pattern. A respiratory rate under 12 or over 25 breaths per minute while resting is considered abnormal. So, is a rate of 22 normal or not normal? How can all these people and all these sources be quoting ranges that are different? Well, it's because they are made up. I'm not joking there is virtually no primary data on the normal respiratory rates of healthy adults. The primary data that we do have includes a study of 110 patients in an emergency room for non-cardiopulmonary complaints who had a mean respiratory rate of 20 with a standard deviation of four. And remember that the conventional definition of a normal range for normally distributed data is two standard deviations. So this particular study would suggest a normal range among ED patients of around 12 to 28. We also have a 2013 research letter that discusses a study of 791 elderly non-institutionalized patients in which the exact same range of 12 to 28 included 95% of those without chronic cardiopulmonary disease. And a 2019 study that looked at 634 elderly patients who came in for routine follow-up appointments. Among the entire sample, the mean rate was 16, with a standard deviation of four, giving an approximate normal range of eight to 24, though advanced age was modestly associated with an increased rate. And finally, the only study of more than 75 non-elderly, non-emergency room patients is, and I kid you not, a physiology textbook from 1846 that published the following summary of respiratory rates in 1900 adult men and concluded that most of them fell into the range of 16 to 24 without any formal statistical analysis because the concept of the standard deviation would not even be invented for another 50 years. That's really the best primary data that's out there. So in short, when someone asks What's the normal respiratory rate in adults? The correct answer is, we don't know. Having said that, the very limited data that we do have suggests that all the commonly cited ranges are too low and that an upper limit of normal should probably be in the mid twenties or even higher. But that we don't actually know is kind of absurd. Regardless of what arbitrary range you decide to use, you will undoubtedly encounter patients who fall outside of it. How do you interpret these outliers? A respiratory rate higher than normal is referred to as tachypnea. There are many causes of tachypnea. These can be categorized by physiologic mechanisms, 
such as hypoxemia or low oxygen levels in the blood, which is the primary mechanism for pneumonia, heart failure, and for some patients with pulmonary embolism. Hypercapnia, or high carbon dioxide levels in the blood, which is one of several mechanisms in COPD or emphysema. Or acidemia, which occurs in a complication of diabetes called ketoacidosis. These three physiologic derangements trigger chemoreceptors in the body which transmit signals to the brain's respiratory centers, telling the body to breathe more. Other mechanisms for tachypnea include high airway resistance, as it can cause a low volume of air to move with each respiration, as seen in an an asthma attack, and anxiety. Or instead, these same etiologies can be recategorized by organ system, such as those related to are related primarily to the lungs, the cardiovascular system, and other. A respiratory rate lower than normal, known as bradypnea, is relatively unusual. When it's observed, by far the most common cause is drug or alcohol intoxication. I'll end with two classic pitfalls or mistakes when it comes to measuring and interpreting the respiratory rate. First, as already mentioned, letting the patient know that you are about to measure the respiratory rate may result in them changing it. And second, mistaking the respiratory rate for ventilation. In other words, tachypnea is not the same as hyperventilation and bradypnea is not the same as hypoventilation. Why is this the case? Ventilation refers to the volume of gas exchanged per unit time, and it is roughly proportional to the respiratory rate times the depth of each respiration. So a patient who is breathing very quickly, but also with very shallow breaths, might not actually be hyperventilating and may even be hypoventilating if the depth of the respirations is decreased to a greater degree than the rate is increased. Likewise, there are some patients with a normal respiratory rate who are hyperventilating due to very deep breaths, a phenomenon known as Kussmaul respirations described most commonly in patients with ketoacidosis.